In lesson 6 and 7 you explored forms and components. You created an application with a form and you added labels for edits and a button on the form. You also learned how to change the properties of the form and the components in the object inspector. In lesson 5 you explored the IDE and you learned that the components are organized in different tabs in the component palette. So far we only used components from the standard tab in the component palette. In this lesson, you will learn about some of the other components provided by Delphi and I will also show you how you can enhance your forms to look more appealing to your users. First, let's see what is a graphical user interface or a GUI. Many years ago, before we had Windows-based applications, we used programs that were entirely text-based. Programs asked questions to the user in text lines and the user had to respond by typing text. There were no graphics and our programs looked very boring. Text-based programs were gradually replaced by graphical user interfaces or GUIs. A GUI allows your users to interact with your programs by typing text into text boxes called edits or by selecting items from lists, checkboxes, menus and so on. Users also click on buttons to instruct the program to perform some kind of task. But with GUI-based applications, it is not always the user that is doing all the talking. The program can also talk back. GUI-based applications can produce results as output. It can display error messages, play sounds or even change colors. It all depends on how the developer programmed the application. The graphical user interface is created in design time, in other words in Delphi's IDE. You will learn in future lessons how to determine which components are needed for your GUIs. I already created a graphical user interface for this lesson and I will use it throughout this lesson to explain some of the components that you can use to enhance your graphical user interfaces. In the next lesson I will walk you through the steps to also create the same GUI but for now you can just sit back, watch this video and make some notes. In the GUI that I created I used a few components that we haven't used in the previous application. But first let's start with the form. Always provide a descriptive title for all your forms. To change the title, you must change the form's caption property in the Object Inspector. A form without a descriptive title immediately gives the impression that the programmer is lazy or unprofessional. A default caption like Form 1 also doesn't tell the user what the purpose of the form is. In this GUI, I used five panels. A panel component can be found in the Standard tab of the Component Palette. The panel on the top just displays the header for this form, while the other four panels serve as containers for related components. The panel on the left hand side groups all the components that are used for personal information, like first name, surname, gender, age and photo. The panel next to it groups components that are used for address information, like city, street, country and postal code. Under that panel I added another panel that contains components used for contact information like the telephone number, the email address and an option to send a newsletter. Another panel groups all my actions that will be performed with buttons like displaying the results, resetting and clearing the inputs and closing the form. When a panel contains other components, we also refer to it as a parent or container of the components grouped in it. By grouping components in a panel, you can also make the design process much easier. For example, when you move a panel to a different location, all its children will also move. If you look closer, you will see that not all the panels look the same. Some of them have different borders. To do that, I changed the bevel inner and bevel outer properties in the object inspector. In all the panels that require information, I used labels to indicate to the user what is required as input. A label only displays captions, so I changed their caption properties. The label can be found in the standard tab of your component palette. I also use a few edits next to some of my labels. A user can type any text directly into an edit. The edit can be found in the standard tab of the component palette. I'm using a combo box for the gender field because I want to restrict the user to choose only one of two possible values, male or female. I added the two values to the combo box by typing them into the items property in the object inspector. Each item in the combo box is assigned an index number. The first item's index is 0 and the second item's index is 1. In this case, my first item in the combo box is the word male and the second item is the word female. I want the first item, in other words the word male, to display as the default value in the combo box. To do that, I change the item index property of the combo box to 0. 
If you do not change the item index property, the combo box will display a blank as its default item. The combo box also has a style property. The default style is CS dropdown. When set to this style, the combo box allows the user to also type his or her own values. But because I want to restrict the user to only choose one of two values, I change the style to CS dropdown list. The combo box can also be found in the standard tab of the component palette. Under the combo box, I added a spin edit component for the age field. The spin edit allows the user to only provide numbers. Obviously, I do not want the user to type in something like ABC. Therefore, the spin edit is ideal for the age field. I further restrict the user by setting the min value property to 1 and the max value property to 100. That will not allow the user to provide an age younger than 1 year and an age older than 100 years. The spin edit can be found in the samples tab of the component palette. Under the spin edit for the age field, I placed an image control. The image can display pictures like JPEGs, bitmaps and icons and so on. To load a specific picture, you set its picture property to a picture file saved on your computer. If the picture that you choose is too big or too small to fit into the image component, you can stretch it by setting the stretch property to true. The user can choose to receive newsletters by checking a checkbox in the contact information panel. A checkbox represents the values true or false. We also call it a boolean value. If it is checked, in other words, if it is true, the user chooses to receive newsletters. If the checkbox is not checked, the user will not receive newsletters. The checkbox can also be found in the standard tab of your component palette. In the action panel, I added a normal button component that can be found in the standard tab. The button's caption is display and it will later be used to read the information provided by the user and it will then display the results. The other two buttons are not standard buttons. They display bitmap pictures and therefore they are called bitmap buttons. You can find the bitmap button in the additional tab in your component palette. To change a bitmap button to a specific type, you set its kind property. I changed the kind property of the bitmap button in the middle to BK Retry and I changed its caption to Reset. I changed the kind property of the bitmap button on the far right to BK Close. When the kind property is set to BK Close, the caption automatically changes to Close. In order for a button to perform an action when it is clicked by the user, a programmer must write code to instruct the button what to do when it is clicked. However, a bitmap button with a kind property that is BK close doesn't have to be coded. It already has built-in code to close its parent form. Now that is rapid application development in action. I added a memo component at the bottom of the form. When the display button is clicked, results must display in this memo, but you will do that in a later lesson. The memo can be found in the standard tab of your component palette. As you can see, you really can create rich user interfaces with Delphi. I hope you made notes and you've written down the properties that you will set. If you haven't done that, just rewind this video and make notes, because in the next lesson I will demonstrate to you how to create this user interface.